Yo, what is really good, my dudes? Today is Monday, September 10th, 2018, and we got another RuneScape update for y'all. Today, we see Rune score high scores being added to the main page, as well as a patch week. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. Let's go. Cats is the illest. What you talking about, Willis? Alright guys, first and foremost, like I said, the rune score has been added to the high scores page on the main website. So you'll notice that there is an achievements tab now there on the high scores and going there will show you obviously that rune score high scores. Then you can compare with everybody in the game world and see where you stack up. At the time of this video, there's currently 1980 in-game achievements and a possible total rune score of 21,840. Just to give you an idea of where you stack up in the ranks. Obviously this means you will not only get to see your friends and how you compare with them, but everybody in the game. Hopefully to drive a little bit more competition when it comes to doing the achievements in RuneScape. They're always adding more achievements so you can see the race to climb to the highest rune score be something that will be a reoccurring race far more than anything like XP on the rune scores. Seeing as that only reopens when a new skill is entered into the game, in terms of being on the top. Well, that's pretty much it, short and sweet, when it comes to today's update. Let's shift on over to the patch notes, however, and see exactly what we've got going on over there. First off, we got some fixes to player own farms. The servants have come back from a brief holiday, although they're not too happy about the farm that has just been moved in. If you get a black dragon egg unchecked from the queen black dragon, it will now appear in its correct form. Beehives now have a right click option to display what flowers they have stored inside. A tribute boosting honey at the player own farm is now produced at a faster rate. The floor from the upstairs of the Servant's Guild has been reinstalled. Players can now walk away from beehives to stop collecting special honey. Any new rabbits you breed will now be bankable and tradable. There were some very strange cases if you kept your original tutor rabbits in the breeding pen, then majority of other rabbits would be classified as tutorial ones and therefore not bankable and tradable. The squash option on the Grand Tree seed pods once again works as expected. Noted flowers can be used on the beehives to create special honey. Fixed a number of spelling errors and various farm related entries. Players can now purchase an upgrade that allows animals to be bred inside small, medium, and large pens. Rabbits killed in the elf lands will now only drop common brown rabbits rather than a chance at relican ones. Players picking from their own grapevine will once again be given a variety of god grapes rather than just Zamorak. Milton the Miller has now returned to his mill. Gloomshroom Zygomites can now be successfully sold to Zoe, the contract buyer. Various types of animal waste, droppings, manure, etc. can now be seen in your minimap as red dots. Beehives will now only take the amount of flowers desired. Players can now click away from the beehive when storing flowers. The Ardoin task, Green Fingers, can now consistently be completed. Hopping worlds on the farm will no longer make your animals appear to be invisible for various lengths of time. Trading any farm animal between players will now select the correct animal rather than whatever of that type appeared earlier in the inventory. Added pathing to the northwest and slightly to the southwest for world map purposes. The correct contract sellers for your animals should now appear in your farm. You can no longer get Great Chinchampa from Grenwall Hunting. Moving on to some elite dungeon changes. The spacing has been fixed in the elite title. Minor fix to the text in the Dragon's Kin research book. Kuroryu pet now correctly shows kill count on examine. Temple of Amanishi NPCs are no longer generated as potential Slayer contract targets from Sajobo when the player has chosen to only get contracts for targets on Uncharted Isles. Silverhawk boots are no longer destroyed as part of the Nimble outfit set. Player owned port special voyages now display the correct scroll graphic icon for these scrolls the player has focused on. The dismiss button on cats will now show the correct icon. Players will be notified if they have the remaining lamps in broken home temporal chests. Challenge of Maria achievement now correctly requires all three challenges to be completed in addition to collecting all the lamps. The jungle strike horns information in the Slayer Creature Kill tab will no longer be out of the alphabetical order. Achievements for the Thieving Guild mini quests will now correctly unlock after each mini quest. Guthix Cache Memories will now display the correct walk animation when held no longer being affected by override animations. 
players will no longer be able to attempt to trade zero stealing creation points for zero bonus experience in a given skill. Fixed an issue with the message when locating the Hellfire Bow if it's situated in the center of the wilderness. Exiting the secret tunnel in Aram's Crypt via the rope will now return you to the correct variant of Aram's Crypt if you have completed the Kindred Spirits quest. You're now able to use the hatchet in your tool belt to make a boat as per Rant's instruction during Scratch's Rescue or the Recipe for Disaster quest. A new category for skill training has been added to the activity section of the world map with an icon for all non-elite skills. The agility combat and hunter training icons have been moved into this category and relabeled for consistency. The construction tutor icon at the Lumbridge Crater Beach has been replaced with a construction training icon. A combat training icon has been added to the Lumbridge Combat Academy. The divination tutor icon on the islands that once were turtles has been replaced with a divination shop icon. Bandos boots will now give a broadcast message as the other items do. Equipping Cyrus's with a dragon Med Helm will no longer show him as wearing a dragon full helm in the Dream Mentor quest. The Ring of Death now correctly activates when at 15% charge. An oddity causing several items to interact awkwardly with Magic Notepaper has been resolved, making Magic Notepaper function as expected with more items. Players with a 6 month summer special membership package can now open the player owned farm bonus chest at the Grand Exchange after completing the farm tutorial. Fix typos in a feedback message when attempting to eat Great Gunkin at full health and in Mountain Camp emote clue in relation to Jockle's tent. Removed force walk tiles in the wilderness dungeon and the grand tree. Players will no longer disconnect when trying to disassemble Doc Spare's parts while wearing the Invention Master Cape. Players that have Virtual Level 120 will now correctly show as having everything unlocked in the skill guide. Fixed an issue where the Ectoplasmator is not recognizing ashes from Necrel or the death spawns they create. Guronin's life points will now be displayed as 10,000 rather than 1,000. Their life points continue to scale off your combat level though this only updates when you attack them. Salty title requirements listed in the achievements interface now correctly includes activating all the Arc Tortle portals. An out of place grass tile within the Warriors Guild has been correctly replaced with a appropriate floor tile. The storage options for the tool leprechaun has been slightly tweaked making item retrieval default from storage to unnoted with a right click option to retrieve noted items where applicable. Removed confusing fade out on individual audio settings when global mute is active. Better describe the effect of ancestor spirits in the aura interface. After completing observatory quests, players have access to a quicker way to get back into the observatory. Going forward, Orlando Smith's hat is now tracked by the clue scroll log with an accompanying quit chat message. Favorited D&Ds and minigames on the in-game clock reset cooldown are now colored red or green depending on their ready status. Columbarium keys can now be used continuously in one action so long as a player has space in their inventory for further rewards and can also be used in faster succession. Graphically improve the earth altar. The tool leprechaun at the Lumbridge Hops patch now appears in free to play worlds. Players no longer need additional space when transmuting driftwood into sliced mushrooms. Jade Vine Seed is now retrievable from Horatio with a right click option. Added clue scrolls and treasure trails as bank preset name options. Added Solok kill counts for the blight bound lasher and Perdita pet examines. Converted the Constitution XP reward of the Missing My Mummy quest into an XP lamp. Moved a shrubbery near the Uglog Lodestone one tile south. Polished the audio settings interface. Changed the XP rewards from Morning End Part 1 into Reward XP Lamps. Gemstone Mine has been graphically improved. Added a few more names to the bottom of the preset names list for you. The stat buffs received from the God Emissary banners will now consistently remain boosted. Added new daily challenges for fishing and cooking involving green blubber jellyfish, blue blubber jellyfish, and sailfish. Listed each impling's level requirement on the Menafoss impling collector toggle interface. Added a worn option in the Wicked Hood that allows the player to quit teleport to the last location they used the hood to reach. Slidy puzzle boxes can no longer consume multiple puzzle skipping tickets when the puzzle has been completed. And finally special slayer delivery is now correctly unlocked when you've bought all of the required learnings. 
And that is it for your patch notes. Links to the main game update as well as patch notes will be down in the description below if you want to go check them out for yourself should you choose to do so. And with that, I'm going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed and you want to stay updated on all things RuneScape related, then hit that subscribe button. Anyways, I appreciate you watching. I am out. Peace.